All right. All right, it's official now, so don't swear. <laughs> best, best behavior. You're tempting me. You're like, you're taunting me into cursing. And <laughs> I'm not going to take the bait. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I just, you know, as a weekly meeting, I just kind of open it up. No agenda here in particular. Oh, hey, Ray. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, just kind of seeing what, what's on people's minds or things they want to give updates. Sean, I know you've been working on Augur stuff. Maybe Chaos Con. I don't know. Whatever is that? Yeah, so um, I think that uh, the big question for me is the conference. Okay. And, uh, because now it, it looks like it's another trade show of the Linux Foundation rather than just a meeting for us to talk about where this is going from the point of view of research. Okay. Um, comments? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, it's not like an LF event. Obviously, this is a community event. Um, so, uh, I mean, that's, I think, that's I one. Think that's yeah. I, I think yeah. my point is that it should not be a community event. It should be a com uh, an event of all insights. Uh, I'm sorry, you're, you're breaking up a little, a little bit there at the end, Daniel. But. Uh, my point is, it should not be a community event. It should be a chaos event for the people who are already in it. Because we, we are trying to decide where we are going. So bringing outsiders is not going to help. Um, well, that's, that's different my point. than we've marketed that's it. That's actually the big difference with respect to the current one, with what I, I thought we had originally uh, discussed was the goal of this workshop. I didn't see it as a conference. I saw it as a workshop. Mm. I think we um, have gone a different direction as I understand yeah. the materials. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty consistent with the chaos con in, in February uh, that we did early in the year. Uh, I mean, there. I mean, there's certainly value in, uh, I guess, more experienced people having workshop. But I'm, I guess, I'm a little concerned that if it's just like the people that are that are already in the community, it's it's somewhat limiting and it's it's it feels like it's closed, right? Uh, I mean, I think we can still have like a breakout sessions for people that are, I mean, that people that actively need to like a work on stuff, but. Um, I, I think we had a conversation about doing a separate, like almost like a hackfest type of thing, like which is a separate event. But uh, I mean, obviously, we can talk about it. But what's the current yeah. structure right now? It's a day, right? Yes, and then oh. I think Jesus and and others, you, uh, Georg, you probably have more details. Like I'm looking at the page right now. Right now, the only decided thing is that there is a call for contributions. That uh, it's going to be one day, the day before uh, Linux, oh, sorry, OSS starts, and uh, that it's going to be in, in University of, of East Columbia, which is close okay. to, to the center. Um, with respect to the structure, I propose to have a structure similar to that in uh, back in Brussels for the um, for the European event, and uh, I thought it was accepted by everyone. I, I, I shared your, your view, uh, Daniel, that we need some um, time for talking about chaos, can, but uh, sorry, about chaos uh, and, and where we are headed uh, and so on. But uh, my my impression is that right now chaos is not um, say a closed group, but it's an, a, a very open group with very um, let's say uh, flexible barriers or something like that. So I mean, some people are in, but they are not really contributing. Some people are contributing, but if you ask them, very likely they, they don't consider a part of the community. So my personal idea for this was trying to include everybody who is willing to do something in this area. That doesn't mean that maybe we also need uh, a specific meeting for deciding where the people who are, let's say, more committed to uh, chaos uh, have time to, to discuss where are we headed, what we want to do and so on, because the, the, the real thing is that one year passed and maybe the original setup needs to be, I don't know, change, adapt, whatever. Um, so I share your, your idea that we need some, some time together, not for, let's say, outreach, but for talking about what we want to do. But I don't, I don't see exactly how to do this in the context of the other thing, because I think the other thing we also need it, because we need more and more people come in and uh, uh, so that we are a real community, not not just a bunch of people who happen to be uh, working in similar things. I, I think that we are talking about two orthogonal things, and uh, one of them is closeness versus none. I think that um, I'm all for being open. I think that uh, what I'm arguing for is 
we have a call for papers, essentially for presentations. So uh, the presentations will drive what we do there, or at least that seems to be the implication. What I'm basically saying is what we need is to sit together and talk about what we envision to be the purpose of this group and how each one of us can contribute to that. And I think that's a, a, an important question because um, we are going in the direction of creating metrics, which is fine. But I think a very important one is like, um, what do we do with these metrics? How do we verify that they are uh, that they are doing the purpose that they are doing? How do we fit this within the current um, um, uh, situations, environment? So um, uh, research, um, the services that we provide. I think that we need those discussions, and those discussions are really not about a call for papers. What if um, can I propose something? So right now, there's obviously the call for papers out, right? Also, oh, it's the already call, out. Sorry, uh, Daniel, I think that you, what you're talking about uh, fits perfectly in the sense that the call is for contributions, not only papers. In, in fact, papers are not expected. It's, it's more like presentations. There are um, tutorials, and I think the kind of discussion that you are proposing fits perfectly. We can either schedule it in, in the time that we have for the ChaosCon, either as a presentation or just as a general discussion at some point during the, during the morning or the afternoon. But in addition to that, maybe we need some more time. I don't know. But um, I mean, this kind of discussions, my impression is that they fit perfectly. We had um, uh, somehow in this direction discussion in Brussels, very short. Maybe we can allocate more time for it. But my problem with those discussions are they are fine, we talk a lot, and then somebody needs to implement what we talk. And the people talking are not necessarily the same people implementing the thing. What I mean is everybody says what they need, and that's a lot. That, that's really good from the feedback point of view because we know what people are needing. But then somebody needs to do that, and that's different. So I agree with everything that's been said regarding the structure of the day, and and following on Hayes's point, Daniel, if you want to put in a call for participation submission to specifically hone in on, I don't know, a category that you want to work on or metrics, then we can put that on the schedule and have a working session and everyone at the conference can participate. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I don't know, like, I mean, I think that session definitely makes sense. Like, I mean, I don't think it, it, I, I think it would fit in naturally with what we sort of laid out in terms of like topics and 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 yeah to answer your other question Daniel the CFP has been open since last week I believe right Georg or, okay yes yeah in any case Daniel is this what you were thinking about or you were thinking about something else no 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 so uh, I think that when we discussed it originally when we started talking about meeting it was to meet all together who are usually in the calls to talk about all of these things in a place where we can have uh, um, a, an agenda a plan for the future I think that we need to get together I think that we need to talk to each other in the same place and it, and I need we need the but bonding that, of that. But so, Daniel just, it just goes against against what I thought originally was the goal, but uh, that's fine. So I'm in the minority in here, so uh, that's fine. So if that's where no, you want no, to no, 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 Daniel. First of all, let, let's try to to find if we can accommodate everyone. But uh, um, I wanted to say that you, what you are describing was my idea for the Gothenburg meeting, uh, along say with with Ixe, that finally we didn't have because it seemed that nobody came, nobody wanted to came. Remember that we were talking about uh, maybe doing it in Europe because it was difficult for Peter to move a lot of people to Vancouver to, to talk about the software and so on. And some of the people were coming to Ixe. Uh, so it seems like a good chance of, uh, of meeting together. Um, finally, we couldn't find enough interest to that. But I'm fine in trying to do that in Vancouver to, to some extent. In fact, it could be the day after the ChaosCon, for instance. If a number of people want to be around, it's only a matter of finding a room for, I don't know, some hours. So that shouldn't be a problem. And I'm going to spend there most of the week. So uh, I personally can join. And I'm very likely some other people from Viterja. And as far as I know, very likely Matt and George and uh, and Sien are going to be there too. I'll be there. So yeah. So if you want to have that kind of meeting, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, 
but but the I mean is we don't. Sorry, go ahead. Let's let's see what happens with the call for participation. So um, maybe nobody will come. Maybe we will have a lot of people. I think that depending on on the success of that is, is yes. what we do next. I, I totally agree. I think we have a lot of flexibility in how we actually implement the day based on the submissions that we get. And so maybe we can just kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. I mean, if, if we have a hundred submissions, well, that's a, a, a slightly um, different, different story than if we have two, two submissions. So well, I, 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 I propose to do one, two things. One is to, to try to have um, some time for this kind of discussion during the CalSCON. And then, Danielle, if you don't mind, maybe you can submit an original proposal. And then no, nothing is fixed in stone. I mean, later we can discuss the specific uh, uh, format for it on, and time slot. No, no, no. I, I, don't, think that it's a, I don't think that it's, it's a meeting of one hour or half an hour. I think that it, the way I envision it is like we sit together and decide what we want to do. We break apart into a smaller group to try to create some ideas then come back and discuss them. That was my original view. It was, it, uh, I always mentioned that uh, I saw it more as, as a typical dash tool style workshop where we create the agenda when we are there. Otherwise, in, in, in one hour, we will end in what we have in a typical conference call. But which one would be the, the, the output of that meeting? Uh, to see exactly what, what, what we are, uh, where we're going with this, aside from just creating metrics. Yeah, I think it would be to set a roadmap for the project mm -hmm. as a whole. Because at this point, our, our emphasis has been on the creation of metrics. Yeah. And I think that cows needs to be way more than that to be too su successful. I agree. I think, I think the development of a roadmap, would, I, I think this is what you're talking about, Daniel. Would, yeah, yeah. Would make that's, a that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. in that case, what about trying to find some time during the, the next days, during the OSS, some, I don't know, some afternoon where we are not that interested in the program or something like that? Let, and, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's see what happens first. And, uh, and then, depending on that, um, Sean, uh, related to this, I have a very specific question. So uh, when you ask for a space at UBC, are they okay with now this being a kind of mini conference? Um, I've asked for um, an additional room and I'm still working that out with them. So I'm okay. solid on 50 people right now. And um, Okay, because I was just wondering whether it was kind of research space and it kind of looks different, right, from the outside. Yeah, I'm... I'm you know, I've presented it as a, a larger kind of gathering, but not as large as I think it might get now. So I'm working on getting additional space. Okay. Um, okay. I've got a pretty high degree of confidence it's going to work out. Um, okay, we're, good. We're, just yeah. in this, we're in this between semester, summer, academic cycle thing right now. So all my responses are slower. <laughs> Yeah, I think the difference now is that uh, it probably will require registration fee and things like that, right? Yeah, I'll, I don't, I'm not really concerned about that. If it requires a fee, I'll take care of it. Okay. But, but do you mean that the, the university may require a fee or something like that? I mean, it's yeah. possible for the bigger space, but I'm not, I don't think it's going to be exorbitant. Certainly a lot cheaper than anything else in Vancouver. Oh, and they'll probably make us pay for coffee and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. All right. Yeah. I mean, I was... I hadn't even gotten that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking because one of the ideas of the of this organizing committee was looking for a sponsoring. So if there is something to pay, let's try to find out. And uh, some idea was trying to pay at least for coffee and stuff like that. Well, apparently, <laughs> Sean can just be a sponsor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, there's a limit, but I mean, I can. I mean, you know, how sponsor. <laughs> sponsored yeah. by Sean Goggins. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. It's, you know, there's we all have little things that we can do here and there in the pause. Right. Well, in, in, in any case, uh, that's something that I, I want to raise in the organizing committee because if we can find some money, we can at least pay for it and, and that kind of a step. Yeah, I mean, I, we're not gonna, yeah, I, I, I don't know about sponsorship or how that would work. I, I don't want to do anything to. I don't really know how that works with the Linux Foundation, since we're a working group under Linux Foundation. It, I'm guessing we can get our own money. 
Yeah, I mean, because yeah, I need to talk to like uh, like groups like CNC app because uh, they express some interest in the past. I mean, just to enough to cover like a food and beverage as an example, like coffee <laughs> and snacks, but it wouldn't be a ton of money. But we yeah you know, we can definitely handle like direct billing if need be. So. Yeah, and I, I guess what I was saying is I don't want us to have to go, I don't want us to go out and solicit sponsors and then create confusion in the marketplace about sponsoring a Linux Foundation working group. And if yeah, yeah. four working groups approach yeah. Intel, that could get confusing for LF. I think. Keep in, keep in mind too the Google Summer of Code generates I think five hundred dollars per student for mm -hmm. the organizations. Yeah. Right. So that's I, that's just going to come here to UNO as it stands right now. So, I mean, there's a thousand, I think it's a 500 per student. Yeah. That's money that we could use to, I think, I don't know if there's restrictions on those dollars, but I don't think yeah. there are. So in any case, uh, Viterja is maybe also willing to sponsor something. But my, my point of view is to find um, specific staff that we want to spend the money on and not just spend the money because we may get it. Okay. So that's why I was asking for the fees in the university because in case we need to pay, it seems, uh, uh, I mean, it seems fair that the first um, uh, the first allocation for the sponsoring money goes to that. Yeah, you know how universities, you know, once you can get them to say yes, it's usually free for the facility. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's advantages to the university to having this group on their campus. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Cool. Um, right. The question that Daniel's question triggered is, are we going to require a registration fee for the participants in ChaosCon? Oh, I didn't understand that. So I, I thought it was about the university. So my, my no, person no, no. Yeah, was... It was about the university. And uh, and I'm sorry, the confusion, because I thought that uh, originally it was more like a personal deal between faculty members at UBC, and not directly with the university. And that's what it is. So much <laughs> I'm not calling yeah, it. That room, right? Once it becomes an official event, it's a very different uh, procedure. So, uh, but uh, I'm I'm glad that Sean is taking care of all of that, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, this my idea is that uh, um, uh, attendance is free. So that if there is any any money to pay, that's that that's got by sponsoring, like we did in Brussels, for instance. Or did, did, did you have any other idea or? No, I, I agree. I think if we can keep it free, that's the way to go. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, just, just, just to, 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 sorry, just to have a, a small account from this discussion, then uh, what do you think about trying to have this discussion either during the CalSCON if we have time or some other moment during the OSS? We don't. This discussion that Daniel was commenting. Let's. Um, yeah. I say let's just wait and see the number of submissions. That's on June, middle of June, I think, is when they come in. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll have a better idea then. It's just a month away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think CFP closes at the end of this month, right? So we'll yeah. have a oh, idea okay. of how many are in, and I think we're announcing the schedule in middle of June. So oh. yeah, I think next couple of weeks we'll have a good sense as to okay. what things are looking like. And then, yeah, I mean, if we need to book a smaller room with like a 10 plus people during OSS North America that well, we can look into as well, like at the venue. But okay. like, maybe, that, like, yeah. maybe that could be the working session that Daniel yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. If we need to have working session for, for a couple of hours, uh, like a smaller room, like we did in LA or I guess even in Prague last year, that's that's something that we can look into. Okay. So one of the things that the Linux Foundation Open Source Summit North America website has is uh, co-located events. Yeah. And I looked at the at the form. What I'm not sure about is is this form for requesting such a space as we were talking about, Ray, or is this yeah. to get ChaosCon, which is located in a different location, listed on the website and so people can find it more easily? Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I need to talk to the events team as well. I mean, like even getting a room, I'll go straight with the events team so we don't have to fill out a form. 
so I'll kind of short circuit it. And, um, and then, yeah. And also in terms of like advertising, if I can certainly ask if they can sort of co-advertise co other events that are uh, nearby. And uh, yeah, let me make sure I don't forget to do that next couple of weeks. Just have to find out who the right person is in the events team, but I'll let you know. Uh, cool. Any other Chaos Con comments? Not too much. Um, I guess maybe I don't. I always say we have no agenda, but maybe just an update on the Google Summer of Code students and how that's all going. Um, the the uh, Keanu, who's the student that uh, is working uh, with Jesus and I on the Augur Percival piece, is uh, just finishing his last exam today. So he's been onboarding a little bit slowly, um, but he will be committed to us as of tomorrow. Okay. okay. By the way, Sin, if you want me to join the meeting, just uh, send me an invitation because I think that we agreed on, on some time schedule. But I don't remember it, I'm sorry. No, and it, it's been hit and miss with Keanu because he's been going through exams. So okay. I, I would like to just have him participate in the regular meeting that, that you're having weekly, I think on Thursday. Is that right, with the other student? Yep. Yes. No, um, my, my student is on Wednesday, is tomorrow. Okay. On Wednesday, we are having this working group meeting. Google Summer of Code group, you mean? No, no, no. The 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 um, sorry, the um, the metrics meeting. The oh, the um, security in the cloud. No, exactly. Uh, That's meeting. Thursday, That's, though, right? I think so. It's on um, Thursday yeah. at six or something. Yeah. And uh, let me check uh, my schedule. But I think that the meeting with uh, my student uh, is on Wednesday. I mean tomorrow. Okay. Uh, let me check. Uh, well, I'll invite you to the next discussion with Keanu. Yeah, it's it's tomorrow at uh, one my time. Okay, I'll I'll invite Keanu to that as well. If you that. want, if you want to just join us, we are doing the meeting in IRC. Okay. The, or, or or we can meet to later via video conference, whatever you may prefer. Yeah. Um, I will, we'll meet you in IRC tomorrow. Okay. So we are using the uh, Grimoire Lab channel because he is, he's mainly working on Grimoire Lab, but okay. we, can, uh, we can switch to the, Chaos can if, to the Chaos channel if you prefer. Grimoire Lab is fine. Okay. What time is one o'clock here? It's like uh, seven more hours for you, I think. Okay. So six so six, wait a minute, it's one o'clock. So that's 6 a.m. or? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, eight. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's too yeah. early for you. It's not too early for me. It's probably too early for Keanu. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> see. Well, he's in your same time zone or he is a bit he ahead? Is, he, he's actually, I think he's two hours ahead. I do too. It might, yeah. it might be okay. He's in Atlantic time. So that's two hours ahead. But that's, okay. that's 8 a.m. I'll, I'll send, um, can you send me the channel and information and I'll, we can forward it to him and, Okay, uh, I'm sending you by email right now, right? All right. So in any case, uh, I don't mind uh, delaying it for one hour or something. The problem is that it has started to become too late in India, which is where my student is. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so it sounds like it's still kind of on the onboarding. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, in, 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 the, in the other case, it's like... Uh, we are in the second uh, regular meeting, and uh, basically he is working with some um, um, little issues that we prepared for him to work in. And uh, tomorrow we should be starting with the real thing. So right now it was like uh, analyzing how to do the changes and stuff like that. And right now my idea is that we start with the same metrics that we are working with now, uh, um, as in just starting to implement them in, in manuscripts. So let's see if that works. Uh, okay, I will say I, I've appreciated, it's Pranjal, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's been pretty vocal, which is nice. 
Uh, yeah, and, and he has been uh, um, talking a lot in, in tickets as well. So if you go yeah. to the manuscript place, you, you find a lot of stuff he's writing. I certainly appreciate that. So mm. tell him thank you <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, so Sean, if you, if you could encourage Keanu to be chatty on the list or... Okay. You know, because like Pranjal is, he's been mailing out to the list saying like, here, we're meeting here, we're meeting on this channel. Yeah, I was encouraging him to send, uh, him to send at least uh, one message per week with really a summary of yeah. what he is doing so that everybody can be on the loop and maybe you want to jump in at some point or whatever. I think that's a good idea. Okay. All right, cool. Um, I just so you both guys know, that there is a midterm report at some period. I think so. It's like mid-June or something like that. Okay. Which is the first report we need to submit to Google so that they get paid because only they only get paid if we are positive about that. Yep. So just keep that on your radar. Got it. So there are two midterm reports. I forget their structure or is there just one? I think it's one. I think, but... I think it is one on on mid June and the next okay. one I don't remember if it is final or there is something some other. So I okay. th think it's like maybe eleventh June or something like that. Oh, that's pretty soon, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so I have the timeline open here. We have the first evaluation on between June 11 and 15. The second evaluation is July 9 to 13. Okay. And then okay. we have the final evaluations in August. Okay, so there are two mid, mid, Three. E two e mid yeah. and a final. Yeah, two mid and a final, I guess. That makes sense. Uh, marking my calendar now. Yeah. What was the, can you drop um, that into the chat? In, in my experience, um, try to be rigorous in the midterm evaluation. A lot of the students, they tend, um, I, 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 I work with three and the students try to, uh, some of them will try to claim that they have too much work and they will catch up. And, uh, and it's less likely to happen in the very last one because remember they get paid after the second evaluation. So, um, if you're rigorous in the second one, then uh, it's it's much better than than giving a slack in the in, in that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I I agree. Like people, I mean, it's like a human nature, right? They try to punt it punt it down the road and and say, yeah, I'll get this done. Um, but you don't need to be like real hard ass about it. But just setting the expectations at the beginning, like Daniel is saying, I think it's a good idea. And, uh, Okay. All right, cool. Uh, any other Google Summer of Code items from people? It's helpful. Uh, all right, so I guess I'll give from a metrics perspective. Um, we, I think we have all the four categories now in the, the um, goal question metric format. So, Georg, what's the status of those PRs? I mean, I could look, but if you know off the top of your head. Uh, we're waiting for more feedback. We've incorporated Jesus' feedback, so we are pretty good. But right now, we're just leaving it open so people have a chance to take a look at. So, remember, this it doesn't fundamentally change any of the categories. It's just structuring them slightly differently so that we have the top-level categories which is like risk or value or growth, maturity, and decline or diversity and inclusion. Um, and then actionable metrics kind of tied to questions that those metrics answer. So um, we've been pretty attentive to remove things like uh, time scales, you know, kind of different ways that you could filter the data because we think that can just show up in the different implementations. It's really just about what the metric is at the core, irrespective of what the filters may or may not be. Mm -hmm. so feel free to take a look. We, we have those other two. It was, this was, we did this for diversity and inclusion and growth maturity and decline, right? Yes. Earlier. So, I mean, those are, those are cleared out. We're just kind of rounding out the other two categories. So please feel free to take a look and add comments. So that's what's happening on the metric side of things. Um, software wise. Any comments software-wise? Nothing special in Gamorlab, you know, the okay. usual releases. 
and um, the, the, there is hopefully going to be some new staff during the next uh, few weeks, mainly the, the web interface for dealing with identities and projects is becoming mature. So okay. I hope to put it into the, into the community containers during the next few weeks, but, but right now it's work in progress. And well, there is some staff which is worrying some people. It's not exactly related to software, but to all our activity. And this new regulation by the European Union on data privacy, the GDPR, maybe you already know about that, which is affecting everybody who is dealing with identities and personal information. And we are doing that. So um, we are in Europe, but basically everybody is affected if there are European citizens involved. And uh, that applies too to public information. And uh, we are still dealing with lawyers, uh, from the, both from the Britannia point of view and from the Grimaldo point of view, trying to clear out exactly what the implications of this. And it, it seems to be a bit messy because you know, everybody is worried right now about this, but there is still no case law about this. So, uh, is this about like, is this related to profiles, like with Sorting Hat? It's not only profiling, it's just getting identities. So something that potentially could be profiled. So for instance, in, in Git case, in Git repositories, we're getting identities of people like email addresses or real names. Okay. And uh, those are affected. The problem is to which extent they are affected. Okay. And, 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 and it seems that there are basically two cases that for research could be good enough. One is public interest and the other one is uh, um, um, a, a certain, um, what's the, the name in English? Uh, well, I don't remember now, but basically means that you have a, a clear objective for that and the objective is reasonable and doesn't go, ag go against uh, the, the essential freedoms of people. And, uh, but, but there is a, you know, a, a difficult barrier there between what's reasonable and what's not from the point of view of the law. And uh, everybody is concerned right now in Europe about it. And uh, mm, you outside Europe are, are affected from the point of view that a European citizen can go to your data set and said things like, you are you're dealing with my identity. So I can um, set up a, a, a case in Europe against you. And um, okay. what happens in those cases is not clear because I don't know what happens if somebody in Europe is setting a case against you in the States or something like that. So, uh, okay. and I think, but, but yeah, just for you to know. So we are trying to deal with this. And at, I think at some point I will be summarizing in at least in the Gumar Lab mailing list because of users of Gimor Lab are very concerned. So. Yeah, that's good to know, good heads up. With regard to that, um, I strongly recommend you to, to go through the process of ethics in your university. Um, in our university, we have two layers of ethics approval. I have both of them for research involving Git. Uh, this, the simplest layer is essentially asking uh, that <coughs> to use information downloaded from repositories, that they're publicly available, and the data that they have. And the second one in our universities, when we involve us, um, asking people and having interviews with people, and um, so surveys, interviews, et cetera. So I know that many of you might not have it in your university, and, uh, but if you do, you should really look into that. And I think at some point, this group will have to publish some sort of a statement regarding the ethics of gathering this information. And I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I'm sure it will not be an easy document to draft. No, I think that at least for, from the European point of view, at some point we should be uh, doing something in this respect because uh, explaining what we do and how it doesn't interfere with the basic liberties on, on, of people and, and so on, it's, it's becoming an important matter in Europe at least. And, um, and yeah, in the end we are, we are dealing with uh, data that can be used for profiling for instance. And, um, and that's a problem from that point of view. So maybe we need to have some ethic guidelines for stuff like that. Maybe based on, as Daniel says, on, on what universities are already doing, because most of the staff is research. But it's not only research, it's, it's also sharing information with the community and stuff like that. So it's, it's a bit more ambiguous than that, I think. Good. 
Good. Um, comments on that. Sean, do you have anything with Augur? Um, Derek, Derek and I have been working. Um, our students had exams last week and they're kind of on a little bit of a break this week, but Derek and I have been working on basically making it easier to deploy Augur for a first timer and making the uh, readme file more complete. Um, not that it wasn't complete before, but we're trying to make it super, super easy for a new person to download and install and start playing with, with Augur. So I think we've, we've come a long way. We released a pretty substantial, you know, a new readme to install it last week. And now our development guide is uh, being our focus this week. All right, cool. Right on. Uh, Daniel, anything with Craigit? Um, nope. So um, it's available. Nobody seems to be using it. And, uh, but we keep deploying every new release of the kernel. And um, we tested it in 400 different C and C++ repositories. It seems to be working. And um, so I think that we are just waiting to see what, others people, what other people think about it. All right, cool. Um, I'm trying to think. I thought I had something else that was on my mind. Um, anything on other people's minds right now while I search my brain for the thing that I'm forgetting? <laughs> so only reminding that we have this meeting for the working group on the diversity, oh, sorry, on um, growth maturity decline on the Thursday. Right. Actually, that triggered. Uh, thank you, Jesus. That reminded me what I, <laughs> it was on the working group. So we do have two, two working groups that are meeting on a regular basis right now. Mm -hmm. um, so there is the diversity and inclusion uh, mm -hmm. working group. Um, Georg, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I know you're. Well, I missed the last meeting because my family was in town. And so I, I don't know what happened since we last talked. Okay. Uh, well, I, you know, I think the, the group is just kind of working through, I think a bit what you were talking about, Daniel, like a roadmap for chaos, but a roadmap for the working group as to what the intentions are. Um, there was a discussions about, there were some submissions, as you all know, that were going out to open source some in North America uh, around DNI, um, but just kind of forming that working group, which is great because again, these working groups are a way for us to talk about the, the metrics that we have been developing on one hand and thinking about the software in terms of how these metrics can actually be implemented uh, in the other. So and I know uh, Danielle from Maturgia has been heavily involved in the uh, diversity and inclusion as well because of the work that they've been doing with Nicole at Intel uh, in the past. So I, I know that's going along real well. And then we have a second work group that's now as Jesus had pointed out, meeting know, every week, two weeks, something along those every, lines. Every other week, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's, I, it's along the same lines, which is saying, let's take a look at the growth maturity and decline metrics that are specified over on the metric side. And let's think about how we can represent these in the software that we have. And what's the relationship uh, between the two? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm, personally, I'm super excited <laughs> about having these working groups going because I think they're the, kind of the first um, tractable things that we have to start putting software in front of people that's considering the metrics that we have and considering the software that we have as well. So I don't know if either of you guys want to make any comments about growth, maturity, and decline working group. I know it's really just starting. Just yeah, yeah, we're coming back together on Thursday this week to, to look at some prototyping of, of different metrics and I think to talk about um, different interpretations possibly of some of the metrics. Okay. Um, I, I would encourage the working groups to send out reminders of the meetings to the list and, That's a good idea. and good potentially point. record your meetings and send out updates to the list, kind of your, even if it's just brief minutes of what you talked about following the meeting for those of us or people that can't make it, just in the effort of transparency. So, super helpful. So thank you, Jesus, you reminded me. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, anything else on people's minds? 
Uh, after the governing board approved the changes to the code of conduct, it's time for us to vote who is going to be on the team. Ray, I think you had proposed, uh, or you had a good tool that you recommended a while ago. Uh, yeah, it's uh, called Condorcet. Uh, that was developed at Cornell. Uh, let me you, post a link here. Yeah, thank you. Because I couldn't find that anymore. Yeah. What's so, the tool for? Uh, it's for voting, anonymous voting. So my plan is to send out an email, uh, let everyone know that the vote is coming up. Last uh, chance for anyone to self-nominate or nominate someone else. I'll make sure everyone who will be on the ballot is also willing to serve on the uh, governing at uh, the code of conduct team. And then I'll send out the election or the ballot so that we get the results in. So that's my timeline on this. Uh, have you ha do you have any nominations? I have two that I know of. Okay. And and what, what's three. the number you're looking for on the board, on the code of conduct? Three. Okay. three. All right, here's an opportunity for somebody to self-nominate or nominate somebody else. So, you know who to email. You know Georg. Yep. All right, thank you, Georg. And thanks for, um, thanks, Ray, too, for pushing on the vote for that on the code oh. of Oh, no, no worries. So. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Yeah. Keep that going. All right, cool. Uh, all right, any other items of business on this lovely May day? All right, folks, I will kind of condense these notes and send them out to the list. Again, I have been recording this session, so if you <laughs> want me to strike anything, just let me know and I'll, you know, if you don't like the way that your hair was done or whatever it might yeah. be. Critical my hair all the time. Critical something about. Yeah. You know, let me know, um, and I'll make changes. I'll get this posted up um, probably in about a day or so, um, and then we will chat either online or next week. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.